Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now this uh, week's uh, video is all about 4x5 large format photography and uh, I'm going to show you uh, a recent acquisition, another camera that I've bought uh, that's going to uh, help me do a certain type of photography that I love to do. Uh, one which I've, I've sort of shied away from because I've always struggled. But before I show you the camera I just want to you know give you a brief history how this uh, this this type of camera uh, came into being and uh, it started in uh, 2018 when a guy called Steve Lloyd uh, set up a, a Kickstarter project to raise funds uh, uh, for his uh, Chroma camera project and uh, Steve sort of kept to the sort of traditional way that the camera's made but to use more modern materials such as plastic, uh, perspex, all in different colours, um, aluminium, uh, carbon fibre, uh, generally to keep the cameras lighter but with a, a more modern look. And uh, from 2018 up to the present day now, I think he's doing quite well. At least I hope he is because I think people like Steve, uh, you know, need thank him because if it wasn't for, for people like him who made things for the uh, film photographic industry, then... Uh, because they do that, it inspires people like me to go buy their cameras and in turn I buy film and it keeps and it helps to keep film alive and kicking. So thank you Steve for uh, being uh, such a good entrepreneur and coming out with such uh, wonderful cameras that you make. Now the camera that uh, I uh, was interested in, I wanted a camera that was a large format camera that was light that was easy to use and, and for me to use at, at night time or in low light conditions. Now in winter time I like to go out with my film cameras and photograph scenes at night because when I walk around uh, through the daytime where I live or uh, surrounding villages and towns you see uh, scenes that you know through the day you wouldn't give a, a second glance but at night time they, they take on a totally different perspective. You know you've got this uh, uh, wonderful uh, light that, that that's created by us, uh, street lights, uh, you know, you, you get these uh, shadows that you wouldn't normally get in the day. It just has a, a totally different look and feel. And, uh, you know, you can go out in uh, all sorts of conditions when it's wet, you know, where you get uh, uh, light glimmering off uh, uh, cobblestones or, or wet roads. Uh, where, where it's uh, misty, you get these very atmospheric looking photographs but I've always struggled uh, to use a, a 4x5 uh, large format camera uh, in low light conditions and especially at night. A couple of reasons really. I find them quite cumbersome to set up in the dark especially when your hands are cold uh, you know getting them set up adjusting the knobs and dials and, and the other thing that I find almost impossible at least I do with my camera is uh, achieving focus uh, through the ground glass screen when there's not a lot of light. So generally I've gone out with my 35mm or medium format cameras and used those. But I've always wanted to use uh, large format because it means I can go out and just take a couple of photographs, come back and develop them and uh, I'm not having to wait to finish a roll of film. So as I say, I, 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 uh, I just needed a camera that was easy to use. So I went onto Steve's website, Chroma Cameras, and I saw this camera and it all started to flash in front of me what I could do with this camera. And uh, he calls it the, the Snapshot. And it's a, a fully fledged uh, uh, 4x5 camera. You can use it um, in the traditional mode by, I'll take the cover off, by focusing on the ground glass screen and using your loop so you'd use it like any other large format camera or you can use it as, as its title as a snapshot camera in other words you load the dark slide into the back you've got a scale there that you can set your own scale I'll show you how to do that uh, later on in the video and then you can point the camera and roughly aim uh, where, where you want to take the picture and uh, just take it handheld. The camera itself is very very light it only weighs uh, uh, 600 uh, grams so as I say the actual lens is probably heavier than the camera. Now when you buy these cameras um, uh, you'll find that there's 
unlike uh, traditional large format cameras, there's no frontal movement uh, on the front standard. Uh, the lens is completely fixed. It does a um, what they call um, um, a technical uh, snapshot, uh, which costs a little bit more than this, but that has a, a rise and it has shift. This, this camera has uh, no movements, but it doesn't bother me at all. I actually bought this off uh, Ford's second hand, advertised as mint, and when I got it, it was. And I, I'll just give uh, Ford's a plug here. They're a great company to deal with. They're up in Scotland. And when they say something's mint, uh, you can guarantee it's mint. And uh, if you're not happy, send it back. There's no problem to get your money back. So don't forget, if you're after a second hand camera, have a look at Ford's. Now, there's a few things you have to take into consideration when you're uh, buying these cameras. And that's to do with the bellows extension and the lens that you're using. Uh, this camera was set up for a 90mm lens, which in 35mm turns is around about 30mm angle of view, 30mm lens. But, but you have to take into consideration this bellows extension. And it's all set with these spacer bars. There's one in each corner. Now for this camera, these for a 90mm lens, they can work from around about 40 to 45mm. And that will give the, the correct bellows extension. Uh, if you wanted to use, say, a uh, 150mm lens, then you would need longer bars. So you can interchange the bars. They're easy. Just take off that screw there. Pull the whole front off to it in all four corners. Uh, screw theirs out and screw the new bars in and fix the, the, the different focal length that you want on the camera. So it's easy to do that. But that's something you need to take into consideration. Uh, the other thing is, I think I'm right in saying that uh, the lenses uh, all have to be what they call Corporal O, and that's the size of the shutter. And I'll just show you on this lens, my 90mm lens. Uh, uh, this is the obviously the front element, and this is the shutter. And um, when you buy the camera, it'll come with a, a plate, and that plate has a hole in, and that hole is uh, Corporal O. So all you do when you get the, the, the camera, you, you get the plate off the camera, it unscrews from the front there, and uh, put your shutter into the into the holder. There's a retaining screw there that comes, or it should come with your lens, and you screw that down so the, the shutter and the front element is tight to this plate. And once you've done that, you can then screw back on the rear element of the lens. It's a bit squeaky, this one, like that. And now the lens is set to go onto the camera body itself. So I'll bring that a little bit closer. So you just then put the camera in the hole, the lens in the hole, and then screw the mount onto the onto the, the camera and onto this helicoid. And then now it's set up is that. And to focus the camera, you actually use this, as I say, a helicoid. And it's very, very smooth. It's not made of plastic. It's metal and it's very precise. And as you can see, as I turn it, it focuses the lens in and it focuses it out. Now, if you want to use it as a, uh, what they call, as it's titled, a snapshot camera, um, or you want to use it like I want to do at night for night photography, where I'm not having to focus through the ground glass screen, you have to set up a, a distance scale and you do that by, I'll just turn this round so you can see. If you just see that scale, I think you can there, let me focus on it. There's a white band that goes around the actual helicoid and you can see I've got some marks on it. And I'll just zoom in a little bit, might see it a bit better. Lift the camera up. There we go, that's better. So we can see these little marks that I've put on. Now, to set the camera up, all you've got to do is put something in front of the camera at a certain distance. Now I've got um, four feet, two inches. That's the closest I can focus with these 40 millimeter bars. If I change them to 45 millimeter, I could focus closer, but I'm not really bothered about that. So I've got it set at, uh, that's the closest focus. Then I've got it set at six foot, 
10 foot and 16 foot than infinity. So they, these are marked off on that helicoid. That's the closest focus. That's 6 foot. That's 10 foot. That's 16 foot. And that's infinity. So it means that when you actually go out with the camera and you want to use it handheld, you uh, obviously t uh, check your exposure. I'll just zoom out again. Uh, check your exposure, uh, cocky shutter, and then roughly focus, stop the lens down, and take the shot. Obviously, not at one second, <laughs> uh, but uh, that's how you would use it as a, a what they call a snapshot for 4 by 5 um, or if you use it at night time where you're using long exposures and slow shutter speeds then you would use it by using the distance scale on the helicoid that I've already set now when I go out at night I normally take uh, if you're not good at uh, estimating guesstimating distances um, a little uh, range finder you can pick these up quite cheap um, and what I do I stand at the side of the camera and with the range finder I just adjust the range finder until what I want in focus into focus and then I set as near as I can on that helicoid to those marks that I've made and then stop the lens down and you're guaranteed uh, <coughs> most of the time that you're going to get that subject into focus uh, you can use on this camera it doesn't come with it but with a cable release that goes through the hand the hand grip and it just screws into the lens like a normal large format camera if you had a, a, a cable release set on them there we go there we go I'm in and then so we set up we cut the shutter and then we can use the cable release uh, if we're in uh, time mode, set the lens to time, cut the shutter, one press, it's open, one press, it's closed. So it's uh, r really, r really easy to use. The other thing that I use as well at night is at a bubble level. It's got some accessory uh, shoes on there. I put the bubble level on there so I can get the camera level. And then I probably would mount the... Uh, the range find at this side so I've got everything to hand on the camera it comes with uh, two eyelets you can hold it if you want uh, with a strap you don't have to put it in a bag and um, you load it the same as you would any large format 4x5 camera I'll just take that off just by pulling the holder back like that and pushing the dark slide in, pull out the uh, the dark slide, cut the shutter, there we are, cut the shutter and then take the shot. So it's as simple as that, put the dark slide back in and pull the uh, pull the dark slide out. So it's like using a regular camera. You can fit uh, graph lap box on this it'll, fit, it'll hold pol polaroids and to take the ground glass off you can use roll film backs you just undo, undo them clips dead easy to do and it just pulls off and then you can fit your uh, your polaroid thing your graph lap back your roll film holders put them in there pushing down that latch and away you go so as i say it does a lot of things that uh, your conventional large format camera does fit that back on like that so it's dead, dead easy to use so this, this, for me, is going to make a big difference because, as I say, when I go out at night time, um, I don't have to focus. I can scale focus. I'll do my uh, exposure reading or guesstimating, as I always do. There's one question you might ask, and that is, well, how do you know what you're getting into the uh, composition? Well, I found a way around that. Uh, if I can find my phone. I've got an app, and they say there's, there's an app for everything. And it's true. Uh, it's called the Viewfinder app. And I've set this app 
set it up uh, it's at 4 by 5 at 90 millimeter and all I have to do is if I'm going out at night time and I've got uh, a scene that I want to photograph I just place the camera or the, the, the phone's camera screen on the top keep it parallel with the body and I can see exactly uh, if you can see that there see exactly what I'm going to photograph or near, near enough I know that there is a little bit of parallax error between the phone lens and the camera lens but uh, um, for the type of photography I do it doesn't really matter and if you're using the camera in uh, the uh, portrait format you'd hold it that way so you get uh, a good idea at what uh, a lot better idea than looking through the uh, ground glass screen of a normal large format camera the camera also has a a tripod socket um, at the bottom there on the hand grip and that enables you to do uh, uh, portrait photography the portrait format as they call it just screw that into there and then fix it to the camera like that to the tripod sorry there's that many knobs and things to twist and that's set into there so I'm now set up for portrait as I say to get the composition I just hold the, the camera up I'll do it that way actually hold the camera up so the camera actually the, the, the lens on the camera is level with the lens on the, uh, on the on the camera body and then we get a great idea of what we're going to photograph now I've been out uh, a couple of times with this camera at night time and it's been an absolute joy to use I've not struggled I can just go see what I want to photograph set the camera up like I've shown you uh, measure the distance or guesstimate it set it on the helicoid uh, get my exposure dark slide in and take the picture uh, check the composition with the phone obviously uh, it's made it so much easier and I'm really enjoying this and it's all in a very lightweight lightweight uh, uh, package actually it's a very uh, affordable way of of getting into large format photography if you you know if you want to try it this will be a good way of uh, of just starting off and uh, you're not going to have the movements but i think all the movements on some of these cameras be, can be a little bit uh, much for beginners this would be a great camera to start you off so that's it that's the uh, snapshot camera great camera to use and uh, very very affordable so I'm going to show you now uh, some uh, pictures that I've taken with this camera at night time uh, I did try to video them so I do apologize if the the, the quality is not very good uh, but uh, it, you know the, the, some of the areas that I do go quite dark so I think you'll be able to get the general idea of what, of what I'm doing to uh, take the picture so we'll, we'll have a look at uh, those pictures and videos next so this is the first picture I'm going to take I'm uh, going to photograph looking down at low with the camera on these uh, damp cobbles uh, I've got the street lamp in the picture so I'm hoping that's not going to cause uh, you know this starburst effect or not, I don't want it too 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 much that I don't, I'm not keen on it so hopefully the lens will control that um, it's important that I get shadow detail and uh, also retain highlight detail so I'm going to uh, develop this uh, Fuji across in 510 pyro and uh, probably do a, a stand development uh, to, to keep the contrast lower and then in edit I can bring that contrast up so I'm going to set the camera up now right I'm going to get the, the camera set up and uh, make sure I've got the composition right so for that I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to use my, my phone app and just check the composition just wants to go up a little bit
and that looks about right. So, pop the shutter, make sure it's on time. This is why you need a torch. Yeah, I'm on time, shutter cocked, dark slide is in, and then uh, I'll take the picture now. As I've said, it's very important to take notes when you go out uh, doing night photography because you can always refer to them and uh, it's strange but you, you remember the lighting situations so I've got a really good idea a good guesstimate of this exposure and I think it's going to be um, 16 minutes at f11 I'm using Fuji across and I think I'm with that I'm going to get good uh, shadow detail as much as I can get and uh, I think the highlights will be fine so I'll take the picture now and then uh, we'll take a look at it Move this camera first though. Right, just one last uh, check of the composition. That looks great. So what I'm going to do now is focus the camera using these uh, um, uh, de uh, scales that I created. And uh, I'm going to focus it round about 16, 15 or 16 feet, thereabouts. Stop the lens down to f11. Take out the uh, dark side. Lens cap off. And then start the exposure. So hang about for 16 minutes and uh, hopefully it should uh, turn out. Right, coming up to 16 minutes now. I love it at night, it's so quiet, well it normally is. And that's the exposure. Dark slide in, black facing out. And that's that picture. Right, I've just seen another picture that I'm going to take, and this is uh, through the rail, and I'll let you have a look. So I've seen this uh, picture, it's uh, a lovely lit scene, it's a Christmas scene, the birth of Christ and uh, uh, although it looks quite bright it's darker than what it looks. So what I think I'm going to do with this one is do an exposure but I'm going to use my torch uh, to fill in some of the shadow areas. So I've managed to get the camera through the railings and I've got a decent angle, at least I think I have, I'm just level, levelling the camera up. And then check the composition with my phone. Well, I looked to have got that one right first time, so I'll leave that at that. Um, I'm going to set the the the, um, the helicoid to. In fact, I'm, I'm going to uh, use the rangefinder to just give me an idea of distance here. So, the rangefinder is telling me 16 feet, so that's just ideal. So, I'll set that helicoid to 16 feet. So that should be in focus. And uh, what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to use the the notes that I take as as I say when I go out at night, and I find it very helpful. And looking at these notes, 
I think this exposure wants to be around 10 minutes at f11 um, and I'm going to use my torch uh, to fill in the shadows on this one so got the camera set up got the focus set shutters cocked on time put the dark slide in Dark slide out, check the time, and check the exposure. So 10 minutes, and as I say, I'm going to fill the shadows in with my torch. Ten seconds to go. And that will do the exposure. So that's that exposure, dark slide back in. So I hope hopefully that uh, that pitch will turn out. Um, I'm just hoping I've given it enough exposure. I, I think by using the torch. That will have, will have helped, but we won't know until I develop the film, uh, as I always say. So we'll move on now. I'm going to move into the church grounds. Uh, that's a little bit darker in places there, and just see if we can find something to photograph uh, within the ground. Well, I messed up with the recording on this. Uh, I didn't press the record button. I came home and there's nothing there. But uh, I think you get the idea from the uh, previous uh, two videos, how I'm uh, working with the uh, snapshot 4x5 camera and how good it is for uh, night photography. Same thing here, set the tripod up, use the phone to get the composition, uh, focused uh, 10 feet into the pitch onto the uh, nearest tombstone and uh, stop the lens down to f8 and calculated the exposure to be about uh, 10 minutes and I think it's turned out uh, quite well I'm pleased that the lights in the background haven't got this starburst effect as I said I'm not keen on that but all in all uh, I'm very pleased with it now I'm not going to show you any more uh, videos just repeating showing what I'm doing uh, with, with the snapshot I'll just show you some pictures uh, a few more that I took on a, another outing uh, a few days later uh, with this camera Now if you've ever used a large format uh, camera before, you'll know that it's quite difficult when it's low down uh, to get your head behind that ground glass and use your loop and get focus, uh, especially when you're getting older. Uh, but with a snapshot, it's so much easier. I placed the camera down, got it level, it was at waist height, set the distance scale and got the picture and it was simple as that. And yes, in this picture I've got the uh, dreaded starburst from the street lamp. But uh, I don't think sometimes you can always avoid that. It's just de dependent on how bright the light is. This was very bright. And uh, the angle that you point in the camera, sometimes it just cannot uh, be avoided. Now if I had to give any advice for shooting film at night then I would say be generous with your exposure. Give more exposure than you think is needed. Try and get shadow detail. We don't want these areas that are completely black with no detail. If you do that then you need to then use a developer or a developing technique that's going to control the highlights because if you don't they're just going to go off the scale. 
uh, you can overexpose the film and underdevelop uh, to bring back those highlights or you could use uh, a method that I've used uh, in a previous video uh, where I've used 510 pyro and diluted it very uh, very weak 1 to 500 and done it as a one hour stand development and that allows the shadow detail to slowly build but controls the highlights. So the old adage even uh, shooting film at night still holds true expose for the shadows and develop for the highlights. And again in this picture I use the snapshot camera fairly low down to accentuate the, the path going in it was wet so it was creating this reflection from the light and use the 90mm lens. Well I got my wish, uh, fog came one evening, it arrived uh, quickly and went quickly but I managed to get to higher ground and got this photograph uh, and I'm pleased with this because I haven't got that starburst effect uh, from the, the street lamps. Uh, we've just got the light coming down from the lamps and the mist emphasising the light going onto the land so I was uh, very pleased with it. And again it was easy with the snapshot camera and the 90mm lens to get to a decent composition. Now this is the Riverside Hotel at Ilkley. And when I look at this picture, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to be able to use a 4x5 camera at night. Taking into consideration the low light that I was working in, look at the detail that this, cat, this um, negative's picked up. The chap on the left hand corner just stood there slightly blurred uh, with the long exposure. The detail in the brickwork in the hotel, the detail in the ping pong table. You'll get this with any large format camera, but using it with the snapshot camera has made it so much uh, easier for me to get composition in this low light condition. So this is the last photograph I took with the Chroma uh, snapshot 4x5 large format camera and I'd just like to say at this stage that I have no connection whatsoever with Chroma cameras, <laughs> they haven't paid me to give a good review of this camera, it's just based on my own opinions, uh, when I saw the camera I could see the potential for this type of photography and I put that into practice and I'm basically just telling you uh, my own thoughts after using it. Let's take this picture as an example. Uh, if you can imagine I'm stood um, behind the camera, I've got a very bright light shining straight towards me and everything, everything seemed really dark apart from that central portion. If I use my uh, Chamonix 4x5 field camera with the same lens, uh, I know because it's got this 6.8 uh, maximum aperture, that's, it, that's what it is when it's wide open, you don't get a very bright uh, view of it on the ground glass screen and it would have been virtually impossible under these conditions for me to acquire uh, a decent composition and, and in fact to try and even get the camera focused correctly and that's notwithstanding having to get the camera out of the bag set it up connect the lens etc using the snapshot has made it so much more enjoyable and fun you basically pull it out of your bag it's got the lens connected place it on the tripod level the camera up, check the composition with the iPhone, set the distance scale and then take an expo exposure and it's as uh, simple as that. I'm not saying that you know these type of cameras um, are going to do the same job as the field cameras where you've got these front movements and rear movements but they're designed for a different purpose and for night photography 
this camera is absolutely fantastic. Now this video is uh, tinged with a little bit of sadness on my part. All the pictures that you've seen were taken on Fuji across 100 ISO uh, 4x5 sheet film and in 2018 Fuji discontinued making uh, Fuji across in sheet film form and I bought uh, four or five boxes as much as I could afford at that time knowing that I wouldn't be able to get any more. Well now I'm down to my last 10 sheets and I'm uh, going to look after them for special photographs but if there's anybody out there who's got any Fuji across or knows where I can buy some uh, if you could contact me I'd be really interested in uh, buying it from you. So this photograph was taken in the grounds of Otley uh, Parish Church, a church that uh, I know very well. In fact, I was married there many, many years ago. A snapshot, a brilliant camera. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, better still, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, leave them below and I'll get back to you. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody that's uh, uh, supported me in 2021. Those that have subscribed to my channel, uh, those that have liked uh, my videos, uh, people that have not subscribed or not liked but just watched the videos, uh, those that have um, bought my prints from eBay auctions and not forgetting uh, those that have donated uh, kindly to the channel. So I'd like, you know, a big thank you and uh, all your support has been uh, so appreciated and it's made all the work uh, that's put into doing videos are worthwhile. So I'd like to wish you all a very uh, happy Christmas and uh, uh, I hope you have a, a great new year and uh, we're not out of the woods yet so as I always say uh, stay safe and I'll see you all in uh, 2022.